You realize that 20, 20 years ago, this St. Patrick's Cathedral was jammed as well with people. They were sobbing and scared. They were worried. Some were covered in ash and grime. They were all searching and afraid. And here they found, I am told, some solace, some sense of providence, some company in community, some direction and nudge to keep on going. So may uh, all of you this afternoon, as I welcome you, I welcome you here, and encourage noble sentiments of reverent remembrance, gratitude for the FDNY and other courageous first responders who came not back, solidarity with still choked up families, friends, and colleagues. Governor Hochul, Attorney General James, Mayor de Blasio, Commissioner Nigro, Chief Richardson, esteemed and highly respected members of the FDNY, and beloved families of our heroes lost, lamented, but never forgotten, distinguished chaplains, welcome and let us pray. When tempted to conclude no one is listening, we know you are, Lord while wondering if anyone really knows our loss, we realize you do. When feeling all by ourselves, we sense that you are with us, dear God. Thus do we gather in prayer, your people, this somber afternoon, confessing you as the God who can transform, transform hate to love, darkness to light, evil to good, death to life, our God who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Your Eminence, thank you. You have been, every day, there for the men and women of the FDNY, for their families. You've shown your love and your support. Thank you so much. It means so much to all of us. And on behalf of all the people of the city, 8.8 .8 million New Yorkers, thank you to everyone who has gathered here in remembrance. I want to thank our Governor, Kathy Hochul, our Attorney General, Tish James, thank you. But I especially want to thank the family members who are here, all of us who are civilians can only begin to understand, but to the members of the families of those lost on 9-11, 343 members of this department. It's a number we cannot comprehend to this day. The pain signified the loss of so many good, noble, decent people who put themselves in harm's way, and a number that represents something so painful, 257 members lost since 9-11. We stand with the families, but we don't know your pain, all of us who haven't gone through it. So all I can say is we stand with you. We thank you for your strength. I've seen it so many times over these 20 years. The family members who were there for each other, one family for another, who showed the very best of this city in your compassion and carried on everything that was good about the one you lost. 9-11 is personal for every New Yorker. Every one of us can tell you not only where we were when we heard, but who we lost in our lives. 
but for you it's a magnitude so much greater for the men and women of this department. Many of you lost members of your own blood family, but you lost so many members of your FDNY family, and it surrounds you, and it's painful every day. And yet, you have persevered in a way that has the admiration of not only the entire nation, but the entire world. It is impossible to put into words the respect that you have won for fighting through the unbelievable, the unimaginable, and always being there to protect the people of this city. Every one of us thinks about this very personally. A few months before that horrible day, I was in a living room in my own neighborhood in Brooklyn, visiting with two wonderful people, David and Marion Fontana. And everyone knows David went back on duty that day, even though it was his anniversary, and we lost him. And I didn't know Michael Boyle personally, but I sure knew his dad, Jimmy Boyle. I think a lot of people in this room knew Jimmy Boyle, one of the most passionate and colorful figures this department has produced in a long time. That family gave so much. Story after story of goodness. People who just wanted to do the right thing. And now they're gone. So we could remember just the pain, but I ask us all on this day to also remember the greatness Remember the joy that these good men and women brought to us and to the world. Remember that those who perpetrated evil did not win. They thought they'd tear us apart. They thought they'd write the final chapter. But in fact, we bound together. We showed all of us what this city was made of, what this nation was made of. The terrorists did not win. They lost. I just hope everyone, in a time of remembrance, magnified by the pain we've been through in the last year and a half with the coronavirus, I hope everyone takes some solace. Every one of you have continued that fighting spirit, that noble spirit. We can't bring them back, but we can do our very, very best to live like them. And to the people gathered here today, I say thank you for continuing their memory in the most noble way. Thank you for living as they had lived, as they would have wanted us to live. And I thank you for that profoundly because it makes a difference and it makes this city great. It makes this nation great. God bless you all. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks, Mayor.
Almost 20 years ago, at a mass for his son, Jonathan, one of our 343, my friend, firefighter Lee Ielpi, stood before us and said, I know he's in God's arms, but I wish he were in mine. How many of us have said or thought that very same thing over the years following the loss of our loved ones? We can hear and believe the phrase, they are in a better place. Yet we so wish that place was right here with us. We remember. We remember that beautiful September morning 20 years ago. It suddenly became dark and mournful, and it forever changed our lives. We remember today and every day those we lost then and in the days since. They were our husbands and wives, our fathers and mothers, our brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, our loved ones and our friends. 
The mission on that fateful late summer morning was at once simply defined yet incredibly difficult to achieve, the rescue of thousands of trapped New Yorkers in our tallest buildings. Our members' courage brought hope to those trapped. The stories of heroism from that day are legendary. In the days, weeks, and months that followed, brave men and women, determined men and women, toiled ceaselessly in the rescue and recovery effort. Many became sick. Far too many have died. We honor and remember them for their sacrifice. It's not an overstatement to proclaim that our 343 and those who've perished since demonstrated the courage that is the essence of the FDNY. They inspired our city, our nation, and our world. People may ask why 20 years later we gather here today. We have all already mourned and cried. Must we still remember? And of course we must. The events of that September morning have joined us together forever. History has joined us to that time and place, and the togetherness brings us strength and comfort, forever supporting one another and caring for one another. We will never forget. And why is it important to be here in St. Patrick's Cathedral? 55 years ago, after the dreadful 23rd Street fire, that took the lives of 12 of our members, the department gathered right here for a solemn funeral mass. And we've gathered here many times since. 20 years ago, distraught members and families, questioning and shattered, sought answers when there were none that would suffice. They sought comfort and strength. This was a place where we received that comfort and strength then and many times since. So here we are once again, we gather together in the company of friends in this sacred space to feel at peace and to remember those we have loved and lost. We know they are in God's arms, but we so much wish they could once again be in ours. This department, the bravest and the best, will never forget our heroes and their families. We will remain strong and will forever honor those who live in our hearts. And may God bless them and bless you, and may God bless the FDNY. Good afternoon. Your Eminence, thank you for allowing the FDNY family to gather and remember our loved ones in this beautiful house, your beautiful house, a building that symbolizes hope and faith in life ever after. Governor Hochul, Attorney General James, Mr. Mayor, thank you for joining us today. Commissioner Nigro, Chief Richardson, and all the FDNY staff behind me. Thank you for your leadership over the past 20 years. It is a true honor to speak here today, and for that I am grateful. Courage. Courage is defined as the mental and moral strength to venture, persevere, and withstand danger, fear, and difficulty. My father, Captain Frederick James Ill, Jr. exemplified the word courage. On September 11, 2001, he was the assigned captain of Ladder 2, only a few short blocks down on East 51st Street. Upon the second plane striking the North Tower, Ladder 2 received a ticket and the company responded without hesitation as fast as possible with the intent to help people in trouble in this great city. That is our mission in the FDNY to the core help those in need without any reservations. 
The symbolic nature of this memorial being held in this great structure means the world to my family. Demonstrating great pride and leadership as the captain of Ladder Company II, he took on the overwhelming responsibility of protecting Midtown Manhattan, especially this cathedral. Binders and schematics of the cathedral's spiral stairwells and roof structures would envelop our kitchen table and living room some nights. Meetings with Cardinal O'Connor and setting up multi-unit drills were set, on, were set up numerous times demonstrating the time it would take to stretch hose lines up to the eaves of this cathedral. Even going so far to order his son to monitor the mobile scanner in his room with the Manhattan Fire radio at night, followed by if a 1075 is transmitted for St. Patrick's, wake me up. In his eulogy, I described my father, father, how my father lived his life with monumental pride. He gave his heart and soul to everything he set out to accomplish. As a husband and a father, he gave us his undying devotion. He was instrumental in our local parish, St. Margaret's of Antioch and Pearl River, accomplishing any task asked of by the Monsignor, including hanging Christmas lights in the trust work of the church that still hang in the rafters today. His love for the FDNY was unwavering. His dedication to every tour was to train his men to be prepared for every type of emergency and fire that presented itself and to make every tour better than the last one. As a young child, I was fortunate to experience the firehouse life many times and see how respected he was by his men. I also was witness to this great job and knew from a very early age that this is what I wanted to do. At operations, he conducted himself with poise and conviction, selflessly making sure everything was done with perfection. From shop backing apartments on the east side at night after a water leak, to rescuing a man on Lexington Avenue's Subway 6 line, he committed his, all his, this time and effort to seeing every mission through. On the day of 9-11, I've been told that members passed him in the stairwell in the North Tower, stating that they were being ordered to evacuate by the incident commanders. He stated to them, I will be right behind you. I'm ju I just have to wait for all my guys to return. I'll see you in the street. He was always looking on for, out for his men and others before himself with monumental pride in his heart. My father loved this country with all his heart. He taught my sisters and I how to be a better American to respect the American flag and value the blanket of freedom it provides, and to respect the military, service men and women who defend it. In 1992, at a young age of 40, he felt a void in his heart and went on to join the United States Army Reserve, reluctant to my mother's wishes. He built schools in South America, building bases in Germany, and built bonds of friendship that would last a, last a lifetime. The impact that my father had on, this, on these reservists motivated them to request the reserve unit up in Billville, New York, to be named in his honor. This was an incredible honor for our family and one that does not come lightly. And for that, we are grateful to the US Army. Dad, thank you for instilling the values to be a good person, to always treat people with respect, Thank you for showing me how to be a great husband and father. You epitomize what leadership is defined as, especially when it comes to taking care of men and women in your command. Thank you for marrying my mother, Mary Elizabeth. I do not think I could navigate these uncharted waters the last 20 years without having such a great, strong, confident woman by my side. As fate would have it, I do believe you had something to do with, my, with me meeting my wife, Mary Ellen, on that St. Patrick's Day in Pearl River. And for that, I'm grateful, for she has made my life dreams complete. Thank you for being one of the best fathers a son, a son could have. You introduced me to this unbelievable dream, the FDNY, and at moments guided me at times while assigned to Ladder 5-8, Rescue Company 1, and currently Rescue Company 4. 
I try every tour I work to be a better leader, a better firefighter, and most importantly, a better person. Lastly, to Freddie and Katie, although Grandpa Fred is not here in person, I know deep down his spirit lies deep inside both of you. Both your smiles, your intelligence, and your will to never give up comes directly from your grandfather. Always remember how special he was and the sacrifice he made. And he loves you deeply and is very proud of you. To all the families in the audience, look to your left and right. We too fit the definition of courage. From the mothers who woke up September 13th and kept the family moving forward, one foot, after, one foot in front of the other. To the siblings that kept their mothers safe and comforted. And to all the FDNY brothers and sisters that keep putting their gear on day after day serving this great city. Persevering, withstanding danger, fear, and difficulty. Our mission is to keep telling the stories, good, funny, and most importantly, the sacrifice that our loved ones made that day. That is the best way we can honor their legacy. God bless all you. Thank you, Commissioner Nigro, for letting me speak. God bless the FDNY, and God bless the United States of America. I know that I speak on behalf of all of the chaplains here and say that there is no greater honor for any of us than to serve the men and women of FDNY. Thank you so much. On this sacred day, we come here not only as believers of different faiths, but as people who belong to one family. I remember years ago, Speaking with a young boy who lost his father on September 11th, I said to him, tell me about your dad. He said, my father always had time for me, took me to so many great places, bought me so many toys. Rabbi, he said, I want to make a deal with you. I'll give you back all the toys. Give me back my father. I said, I wish I could but I think you can give back to him all the love that you have in your heart. You can say as the song says, I want to be just like you, Dad. September 11th taught all of us that death may take away life, but it does not take away love. You FDNY loved your brothers and sisters so much, you refused to leave the site, so many sacrificing their lives. You see, you were not just great on September 11th. You were great before September 11th and became greater after September 11th. I believe that one day when you, we are reunited with our loved ones and they ask us, what did you do when we were no longer with you? We will answer, we never forgot you. There is an ancient Yiddish proverb 
that says the memorial monument of a person is not that which is implanted in the ground. It's the one that's implanted in our heart. We will hold them in our hearts. And with our hands, we will hold one another. Yes, we cannot bring them back. But like I said to that young boy, we can continue to give back to them as one family. Amen. Amen.
Good afternoon. It is an honor to stand here before you as Chief of Department on this, the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Everyone knows where they were on that day. But today, we are here to honor and remember the brave souls of our department who gave their lives so others could live. As I prepared for today, I prayed very hard for the inspiration to gather my thoughts and to figure out how my remarks could maybe bring some comfort and solace to our 9-11 families and our post-9-11 families and to somehow inspire our rank-and-file firefighters officers, EMTs, and paramedics. What I did was reflect on the time I spent at the World Trade Center site during the rescue and recovery. I attended a memorial mass last week in honor of Father Michael Judge, and I read a book about 9-11. As I reflected on my time working on the pile, as it was called, I remembered the group of fathers, former firefighters and officers who had lost their sons how they were there just about every day. They inspired us all to work very hard. I will never forget the Ground Zero Cross that was raised from the rubble on September 13th, which became a symbol of hope, a symbol of faith, and a symbol of healing. It was placed on a pedestal at the site, which remained until the end of the recovery operation. The location of the cross was where Sunday services became a regular occurrence for those who wanted to participate. It also was a place where families of the lost could come. Many left personal effects to share their grief and loss. This 17-foot high symbol was very powerful. It could be seen from most areas of the site. It now sits in the 9-11 Memorial Museum. Last Sunday, I attended a memorial mass for Father Michael Judge. Father Judge was the first fatality recorded on September 11th. It is said that he was the good shepherd guiding his flock while they performed their heroic duties. I was struck by the priest's homily at the mass when he said, and I am paraphrasing, many times people will say that time heals. He continued and claimed that time often does not heal, but that faith heals. I believe faith brings hope, and it is our hope that maybe someday your families can heal from your emotional wounds through faith. The book I read about 9-11 sparked several different emotions, but when I finished it, I found it to be a wonderful reflection on those we lost and those we continue to lose due to World Trade Center illness. I want to share just a short paragraph from the last page of the book. September 11th is like a wall separating two different worlds, pre and post, before and after, a borderline between life and death, impenetrable, unforgettable. Countless people were forever changed that day in New York, across America, and all over the world. They all have a story. There are thousands of stories, each deeply personal and meaningful, each as valid as the next. Maybe all we can do is remember and tell the stories. So as I looked for inspiration to prepare for my remarks today, I realized that I am inspired each and every day when I come to work by the 15,000 uniformed members of the FDNY most of which came on the job after September 11th. We have many legacy members, sons and daughters of those we lost. They have chosen to proudly serve in this vocation we call the Fire and EMS Service. What a beautiful testament to their families. If we look further all around the country, men and women continue to step up and serve in the first responder community and the military. This is the American spirit at its best. When I think about the 13 servicemen and women who were killed in Afghanistan recently, most of them were either infants or toddlers on 9-11. Yet 20 years later, they chose to serve. We are blessed as a nation to have people who continue to answer the call of duty. I'll conclude my remarks with the words of remembrance 
that were offered in every firehouse and EMS station this morning at 845. Today, we remember the bravery of the 343 members of this great department who made the supreme sacrifice 20 years ago so that others could be saved. 20 years ago today, members gathered in their firehouses and EMS stations to begin another day of service to the people of this city, not knowing what the day would bring. This can be said about every day in the life of a career first responder. On September 11, 2001, the department lost not simply 343 members, but we lost one member 343 times. Today, we come together to remember each of these individuals. We also come as a fire department family to give strength and support to each other. We continue to honor the memory of our 343 fallen members and their contribution to the department, the city, and the country. We will never forget. How you doing? Good afternoon. My father was Stephen C. Morciel, who started off as a fireman in Engine 271 in Bushwick and was later promoted to fire marshal in the late 90s. After his promotion, he worked in headquarters as Chief Peter J. Ganty's XO and driver. Twenty years later, my father was working at headquarters when he heard Chief Ganty yell from down the hall to, at the time, Chief Nigro that a plane had hit the World Trade Center. My father, along with Chief Nigro, ran over to his office looked out the window and saw that the World Trade Center was on fire. The three of them immediately responded together in the same vehicle that morning. <clears throat> that day I got to see what a lot of others didn't get to see. That was my dad walking down the block, covered head to toe, toe in dust and debris, and alive, but missing his boss and good friend, Chief Gansey. Although he survived that day, years later he would become ill like many other members due to the toxic debris and dust from that day and from the pile many months afterwards and almost 10 years after the attacks on the World Trade Center, he would pass away. <clears throat> Although he is not with us, our memories have not faded. My father was a strong, tough guy with a big heart and also one of the biggest ball busters I've ever met, a typical fireman. He loved his family, his friends, and the New York City Fire Department, and we all loved him back the same. It is always nice to run into people around the job that knew him, and they always had nothing but great things to say, whether it was a funny story or just a favor he had did for somebody. The sign-up for the firefighter's test was announced on the day my dad <coughs> passed away, and after seeing all the support from the job at his wake and funeral, it was a no-brainer for me. The department was something I wanted to be a part of. It is an honor for me to follow his legacy, wearing the same badge, doing the same job he loved so much. Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, 20 years ago, 343 families learned that a significant member of their family would not be returning. <laughs> 20 years ago, 343 families became one family in their grief and mourning. Twenty years ago, 343 families began to search for meaning for the senseless act of mass murder. Twenty years ago, 343 families learned 
that their husbands, fathers, brothers, friends died because they had one thing in common. They all lived their lives with gospel values. Lord, <coughs> somewhere in their lives, they were instilled with the values of commitment, generosity, and compassion. And they search for a life in which they can live these values. They found that life in the fire department of the city of New York. And because they lived these values, they entered the towers of the World Trade Center without hesitation. Because they lived these values, they began to climb the stairs of these towers, only to discover that they're no longer climbing the stairs of the Trade Center, but climbing the hill of Calvary. And their sacrifice earned them then the right to climb the hill of resurrection. Father, there are other families present with us today whose loved ones also learned to live their lives with values, who also, through their sacrifice, became victims of the terrorist attack. These are the ones who, tirelessly digging through the rubble to find those who lost on 9-11, they, le they learned that they were digging through the hill of Calvary, and because of their sacrifice, earned them the right to climb the hill of resurrection. Heavenly Father, help all of us to learn from our loved ones the lessons of life taught by these firefighters, the lessons of sacrifice and values, which earned them admittance into paradise. We pray also today for all members of the FDNY they will continue to learn the seriousness of the calling they have received from God and continue to learn and follow the traditions taught by those who have gone before us. Holy Father, we ask you today to continue to bless us all with your peace. Amen. This evening, as on every anniversary of September 11th, the tribute of light, the two towers of light will shine, rising to the heavens. As we look at these magnificent bright lights breaking through the darkness of the night sky, may we be mindful of those we are here to remember. Those who arrived at the World Trade Center that day and offered their lives to rescue those they did not know by name. We must also be mindful of the members of this department who worked day after day, week after week, and gave their lives to recover those who were lost. When we hear the Gospel of St. John, we are reminded that light is defined as life. As we light the two candles that grace our cathedral sanctuary on this memorable anniversary, may they remind us not only of our past life together, but remind us of our future life together. I now invite our FDNY chaplains to light our 20th anniversary memorial candles.
Members of the department who made the supreme sacrifice while operating at Manhattan Box 558087 World Trade Center on September 11, 2001. First Deputy Fire Commissioner William M. Feehan. Chief of Department Peter J. Gansey, Jr. Assistant Chief Gerard A. Barbaro. Assistant Chief Donald J. Burns. Deputy Chief Dennis A. Cross. Deputy Chief Raymond M. Downey, Sr. Deputy Chief Edward F. Geraghty. Deputy Chief Charles L. Casper. Deputy Chief Joseph R. Marchbanks, Jr. Deputy Chief Oreo J. Palmer. Deputy Chief John M. Paolillo. Chaplain, Father Michael F. Judge. Battalion Chief James M. Amato. Battalion Chief Thomas P. DeAngelis. Battalion Chief Dennis L. Devlin. Battalion Chief John J. Fanning. Battalion Chief Thomas J. Farino. Battalion Chief Joseph D. Farrelly. Battalion Chief Joseph Dreslak. Battalion Chief Thomas T. Haskell, Jr. Battalion Chief Brian C. Hickey. Battalion Chief William J. McGovern. Battalion Chief Louis J. Mataferi. Battalion Chief John M. Moran. Battalion Chief Richard A. Prunty. Battalion Chief Matthew L. Ryan. Battalion Chief Fred C. Sheffield, Jr. Battalion Chief Lawrence T. Stack. Battalion Chief John P. Williamson. Captain Daniel J. Brethel. Captain Patrick J. Brown. Captain Vincent E. Brunton. Captain William F. Burke, Jr. Captain Frank J. Callahan. Captain Martin J. Egan, Jr. Captain Michael A. Esposito. Captain John R. Fisher. Captain Vincent F. Giamano. Captain Terence S. Hatton. Captain Walter G. Hines. Captain Frederick J. Ill, Jr. Captain William E. McGinn. Captain Thomas C. Moody. Captain Daniel O'Callaghan. Captain William S. O'Keefe. Captain Vernon A. Richard. Captain Timothy M. Stackpole. Captain Patrick J. Waters. Captain David T. Woolley. Lieutenant Joseph Agnello. Lieutenant Brian G. Ahern. Lieutenant Greg Atlas. Lieutenant Stephen J. Bates. Lieutenant Carl J. Badijan. Lieutenant John A. Chrissy. Lieutenant Edward A. Diatri. Lieutenant Manuel Del Valle, Jr. Lieutenant Andrew J. Desperito. Lieutenant Kevin W. Donnelly. Lieutenant Kevin C. Dowdell. Lieutenant Michael N. Fodor. Lieutenant David J. Fontana. Lieutenant Andrew A. Fredericks. Lieutenant Peter L. Freund. Lieutenant Charles W. Gabarini. Lieutenant Ronnie E. Geese. Lieutenant John F. Ginley. Lieutenant Jeffrey E. Guja. Lieutenant Joseph P. Gullickson. Lieutenant David Halderman. Lieutenant Vincent G. Halloran. Lieutenant Harvey L. Harrell. Lieutenant Stephen G. Harrell. Lieutenant Michael K. Healy. Lieutenant Timothy B. Higgins. Lieutenant Anthony M. Jovic. Lieutenant Thomas R. Kelly. Lieutenant Ronald T. Kerwin. Lieutenant Joseph G. Levy. Lieutenant Michael F. Lynch. Lieutenant Patrick J. Lyons. Lieutenant Charles J. Margiata. Lieutenant Peter C. Martin. Lieutenant Paul R. Martini. Lieutenant Paul T. Mitchell. Lieutenant Dennis Mohica. Lieutenant Raymond E. Murphy. Lieutenant Robert B. Nagel. Lieutenant John P. Napolitano. Lieutenant Thomas G. O'Hagan. Lieutenant Glenn C. Perry. Lieutenant Philip S. Petty. Lieutenant Kevin J. Pfeiffer. Lieutenant Kenneth J. Balin, Sr. Lieutenant Michael T. Quilty. Lieutenant Ricardo J. Quinn. 
Lieutenant Robert M. Regan, Lieutenant Michael T. Russo, Sr., Lieutenant Christopher P. Sullivan, Lieutenant Robert F. Wallace, Lieutenant Jeffrey P. Walls, Lieutenant Michael P. Wakola, Lieutenant Glenn E. Wilkinson, Fire Marshal Ronald P. Buka, Fire Marshal Andre G. Fletcher, Fire Marshal Vincent D. Kane, Fire Marshal Kenneth B. Kumpel, Fire Marshal Paul J. Pansini, Firefighter Eric T. Allen, Firefighter Richard D. Allen, Firefighter Calixto Anea Jr., Firefighter Joseph J. Angelini Sr., Firefighter Joseph J. Angelini Jr., Firefighter Faustino Apostol Jr., Firefighter David G. Arce, Firefighter Louis Arena, Firefighter Carl F. Asaro, Firefighter Gerald T. Atwood, Firefighter Gerard Baptiste, Firefighter Matthew E. Barnes, Firefighter Arthur T. Barry, Firefighter Stephen E. Belson, Firefighter John P. Bergen, Firefighter Paul M. Byer, Firefighter Peter A. Bielfeld, Firefighter Brian E. Bilcher, Firefighter Carl V. Beeney, Firefighter Christopher J. Blackwell, Firefighter Michael L. Bocino, Firefighter Frank J. Bonomo, Firefighter Gary R. Box, Firefighter Michael Boyle, Firefighter Kevin H. Bracken, Firefighter Michael E. Brennan, Firefighter Peter Brennan, Firefighter Andrew C. Brun, Firefighter Greg J. Buck, Firefighter John P. Burnside, Firefighter Thomas M. Butler, Firefighter Patrick D. Byrne, Firefighter George C. Kane, Firefighter Salvatore B. Calabro, Firefighter Michael F. Camarata, Firefighter Brian Canizaro, Firefighter Dennis M. Carey Sr., Firefighter Michael S. Carlo, Firefighter Michael T. Carroll, Firefighter Peter J. Carroll, Firefighter Thomas A. Casoria, Firefighter Michael J. Cawley, Firefighter Vernon P. Cherry, Firefighter Nicholas P. Schiaffalo, Firefighter John G. Shapora, Firefighter Michael J. Clark, Firefighter Stephen Coakley, Firefighter Terrell Coleman, Firefighter John M. Collins, Firefighter Robert J. Cordis, Firefighter Ruben D. Correa, Firefighter James R. Coyle, Firefighter Robert J. Crawford, Firefighter Thomas P. Cullen III, Firefighter Robert Corotolo, Firefighter Michael D. Doria, Firefighter Scott M. Davidson, Firefighter Edward J. Day, Firefighter Martin N. DeMeo, Firefighter David P. DeRubio, Firefighter Gerard P. Dewan, Firefighter George De Pasquale, Firefighter Gerard J. Duffy, Firefighter Michael J. Elferis, Firefighter Francis Esposito, Firefighter Robert E. Evans, Firefighter Terence P. Farrell, Firefighter Lee S. Feeling, Firefighter Alan D. Feinberg, Firefighter Michael C. Fiore, Firefighter John J. Florio, Firefighter Thomas J. Foley, Firefighter Robert J. Foti, Firefighter Thomas Gambino Jr., Firefighter Thomas A. Gardner, Firefighter Matthew D. Garvey, Firefighter Bruce H. Gary, Firefighter Gary P. Guidel, Firefighter Dennis P. Germain, Firefighter James A. Guyberson, Firefighter Paul J. Gill, Firefighter Jeffrey J. Giordano, Firefighter John J. Giordano, Firefighter Keith A. Glasgow, Firefighter James M. Gray, Firefighter Jose A. Guadalupe, Firefighter Robert W. Hamilton, Firefighter Sean S. Hanley, 
Firefighter Thomas P. Hannafin. Firefighter Dana R. Hannon. Firefighter Daniel E. Harlan. Firefighter Timothy S. Haskell. Firefighter Michael H. Howe. Firefighter John F. Heppernan. Firefighter Ronnie L. Henderson. Firefighter Joseph P. Henry. Firefighter William L. Henry, Jr. Firefighter Thomas J. Hetzel. Firefighter Jonathan R. Homan. Firefighter Thomas P. Hollihan. Firefighter Joseph G. Hunter. Firefighter Jonathan L. Ielpe. Firefighter William R. Johnston. Firefighter Andrew B. Jordan, Sr. Firefighter Carl H. Joseph. Firefighter Angel L. Huarbe, Jr. Firefighter Paul H. Keating. Firefighter Richard J. Kelly, Jr. Firefighter Thomas W. Kelly. Firefighter Thomas J. Kennedy. Firefighter Michael V. Kiefer. Firefighter Robert C. King, Jr. Firefighter Scott M. Kopitko. Firefighter William E. Krukowski. Firefighter Thomas J. Kuvakis. Firefighter David J. LaForge. Firefighter William D. Lake. Firefighter Robert T. Lane. Firefighter Peter J. Langone. Firefighter Scott A. Larson. Firefighter Neil J. Levy. Firefighter Daniel F. Libretti. Paramedic Carlos R. Lillo. Firefighter Robert T. Lenane. Firefighter Michael F. Lynch. Firefighter Michael J. Lyons. Firefighter Joseph Maffeo. Firefighter William J. Mahoney. Firefighter Joseph E. Maloney. Firefighter Kenneth J. Marino. Firefighter John D. Marshall. Firefighter Joseph A. Mascali. Firefighter Keith Roy M. Maynard. Firefighter Brian G. McAleese. Firefighter John K. McAvoy. Firefighter Thomas J. McCann. Firefighter Dennis P. McHugh. Firefighter Robert D. McMahon. Firefighter Robert W. McPadden. Firefighter Terence A. McShane. Firefighter Timothy P. McSweeney. Firefighter Martin E. McWilliams. Firefighter Raymond M. Meisenheimer. Firefighter Charles R. Mendez. Firefighter Steve J. Mercado. Firefighter Douglas C. Miller. Firefighter Henry A. Miller, Jr. Firefighter Robert J. Manara. Firefighter Thomas Mingione. Firefighter Manuel Mojica. Firefighter Carl E. Molinaro. Firefighter Michael G. Montesi. Firefighter Vincent S. Morello. Firefighter Christopher M. Mozillo. Firefighter Richard T. Muldowney, Jr. Firefighter Michael D. Mullen. Firefighter Dennis M. Mulligan. Firefighter Peter A. Nelson. Firefighter Gerard T. Nevins. Firefighter Dennis P. Oberg. Firefighter Douglas E. Olschlager. Firefighter Joseph J. Ogren. Firefighter Samuel P. Otis. Firefighter Patrick J. O'Keefe. Firefighter Eric T. Olson. Firefighter Jeffrey J. Olson. Firefighter Stephen J. Olson. Firefighter Kevin M. O'Rourke. Firefighter Michael J. Otten. Firefighter Jeffrey A. Palazzo. Firefighter Frank Palumbo. Firefighter James N. Papa George. Firefighter Robert E. Paro. Firefighter Darrell V. Pearsall, Jr. Firefighter Christopher J. Pickford. Firefighter Sean E. Powell. Firefighter Vincent A. Princiata. Firefighter Kevin M. Pryor. Firefighter Lincoln Guape. Firefighter Leonard J. Regaglia. Firefighter Michael P. Ragusa. Firefighter Edward J. Rawl. Firefighter Adam D. Rand. Firefighter Donald J. Regan. Firefighter Christian M. O. Regenhard. Firefighter Kevin O. Riley. Firefighter Jimmy Riches. 
Firefighter Joseph R. Ravelli Jr. Firefighter Michael E. Roberts. Firefighter Michael E. Roberts. Firefighter Anthony Rodriguez. Firefighter Matthew S. Rogan. Firefighter Nicholas P. Rosamundo. Firefighter Paul G. Ruback. Firefighter Stephen P. Russell. Firefighter Thomas E. Sabella. Firefighter Christopher A. Santora. Firefighter John A. Santor. Firefighter Gregory T. Sosito. Firefighter Dennis Scauzo. Firefighter John A. Shart. Firefighter Thomas G. Scholes. Firefighter Gerard P. Schrang. Firefighter Gregory R. Sikorsky. Firefighter Stephen G. Siller. Firefighter Stanley S. Smagala Jr. Firefighter Kevin J. Smith. Firefighter Leon Smith Jr. Firefighter Robert W. Spear Jr. Firefighter Joseph P. Spore Jr. Firefighter Gregory M. Stajic. Firefighter Jeffrey Stark. Firefighter Benjamin Suarez. Firefighter Daniel T. Sir. Firefighter Brian E. Sweeney. Firefighter Sean P. Tallon. Firefighter Alan Tarashevitz. Firefighter Paul A. Tegmeyer. Firefighter John P. Tierney. Firefighter John J. Tipping II. Firefighter Hector L. Tirado Jr. Firefighter Richard B. Van Hein. Firefighter Peter A. Vega. Firefighter Lawrence G. Belling. Firefighter John T. Vigiano II. Firefighter Sergio G. Vigianueva. Firefighter Lawrence J. Virgilio. Firefighter Kenneth T. Watson. Firefighter Michael T. Weinberg. Firefighter David M. Weiss. Firefighter Timothy M. Welty. Firefighter Eugene M. Whalen. Firefighter Edward J. White III. Firefighter Mark P. Whitford. Firefighter Raymond R. York. Retired members of the department and member of the fire patrol who died while operating at Manhattan Box 558087 World Trade Center on September 11, 2001. Retired Captain James J. Corrigan. Retired Firefighter Philip T. Hayes. Retired Firefighter William Wren. Fire Patrolman Keith Roma. Members of the department who died due to illnesses related to their work in the rescue and recovery effort at Manhattan Box 55. 8087 World Trade Center on September 11th, 2001. Firefighter Gary E. Celentani. Firefighter Robert W. Dillon. Firefighter Van Clive A. Johnson. Firefighter Russell C. Brinkworth. Firefighter Edward V. Tejan. Firefighter Walter Voigt. Battalion Chief Kevin R. Burns. Firefighter Stephen M. Johnson. Lieutenant Richard M. Burke. Firefighter Michael Sophia. Firefighter Joseph T. Callahan. Firefighter Joseph P. Costello. Firefighter William R. O'Connor. Lieutenant Ronaldo Natal. Paramedic Deborah Reeve. Lieutenant Cruz Antonio Fernandez. Fire Marshal William Wilson Jr. Lieutenant Thomas J. Hodges. Firefighter Robert J. Weber. Lieutenant Joseph P. Kalalori Jr. Firefighter Michael J. Shaggy. Firefighter William R. St. George. Firefighter Raymond W. Halber. Lieutenant Brian Ellicott. Firefighter William E. Moreau. Lieutenant John P. Murray. Firefighter Sean M. McCarthy. Firefighter Bruce M. Foss. Firefighter Jacques W. Paltry. Firefighter Martin C. Simmons. Firefighter Kevin M. Delano Sr. Lieutenant Vincent J. Tancredi II. Paramedic Clyde F. Seeley. Firefighter Timothy G. Lockwood. Firefighter Anthony Alisi. Firefighter Edward F. Riley Jr. Firefighter John F. McNamara. Lieutenant Thomas G. Roberts. 
Captain Kevin J. Cassidy. Firefighter Joan R. Daly. Firefighter Richard A. Manetta. Lieutenant Peter J. Farenkoff. Battalion Chief John J. Vaughn. Firefighter Robert A. Ford. Paramedic Kareen A. Brown. Firefighter James J. Ryan. Lieutenant Robert M. Hess. EMT Freddie Rosario. Lieutenant Harry Wanamaker Jr. Supervisor Communications Electrician Philip J. Berger. Firefighter Vincent J. Albanese. Firefighter Robert J. Ventriglia. Firefighter John P. Sullivan Jr. Firefighter Roy W. Chelson. Firefighter William H. Quick. Lieutenant Andrew M. Borghese. Firefighter John F. O'Neill. Firefighter Willie T. Franklin Jr. Lieutenant Randy J. Weback. Firefighter Brian C. Malloy. Lieutenant John A. Garcia. Firefighter Anthony J. Nuccio. Fire Marshal Stephen C. Moziello. Firefighter Carl Capobianco. Captain Emilio R. Longo. Firefighter Raymond Ragucci. Deputy Chief William J. Guido. Captain Sheldon Baracus. Firefighter Virginia A. Spinelli. Deputy Assistant Chief John S. McFarlane. Lieutenant Robert J. Stegmeyer. Lieutenant Mark W. McKay. Firefighter Owen T. Carlock. EMT Anthony J. Vaccara. Lieutenant Patrick J. Sullivan. Firefighter Michael F. Mangelli. Firefighter Lawrence J. Sullivan. Firefighter Michael G. Behetti. Battalion Chief Thomas R. Van Doren. Battalion Chief Richard E. McGuire. EMT Joseph V. Schumo. Paramedic Ruben I. Berrios. Firefighter Walter Torres. Battalion Chief John K. Corcoran. Firefighter Andrew D. Dal Cortivo. Lieutenant Martin T. Fulham. Firefighter Charles L. Jones III. Battalion Chief Richard D. Arizosa. Supervising Fire Marshal Emil K. Harnischfeger. Lieutenant Douglas Mulholland. Captain Peter J. Casey. Paramedic Rudolph T. Havelka. EMT Francis A. Charles. Paramedic John W. Wyatt Jr. EMT Louis De Pena. Firefighter Adolfo Atanio. Lieutenant Michael F. Cavanaugh. Deputy Chief Inspector James W. Mandelkov. Lieutenant Thomas J. Graney. Firefighter Keith E. Atlas. Auto Mechanic Rafael E. Scarpitti. Lieutenant Walter J. Nelson Jr. Lieutenant John J. Halpin. Captain William C. Olson. Lieutenant Stephen B. Reisman. Firefighter Ronald R. Brennison. Lieutenant John K. Grems. Firefighter Daniel E. Hegland. Firefighter Robert E. Lever. Lieutenant Howard J. Bischoff. Firefighter Cornell L. Horn. Lieutenant Thomas Giammarino. Firefighter Eugene J. McCarry. Firefighter James J. Marshall Sr. Firefighter Charles S. Zoki. Firefighter Richard E. Noggin. Battalion Chief John J. Cassidy. Captain John R. Graziano. Firefighter Gregory A. Chevalli. Battalion Chief George D. Iser. Firefighter James M. Hicks. Captain John Gallagher. Lieutenant Keith M. Lachlan. Captain Thomas J. Thompson. Lieutenant Harold E. McNeil, Sr. Lieutenant Gary J. Gates. Firefighter Dennis J. Heedles, Sr. Firefighter Nicholas J. Damasi. Firefighter Thomas A. Lynn. Battalion Chief James N. Costello. Firefighter Frank D. Fontano. Firefighter Michael P. Smith. Firefighter Thomas J. Kelly. EMT Norman Valley. Firefighter Joseph A. Morstadt. Lieutenant Robert G. Alford. 
Firefighter Thomas Farrell. Firefighter Robert W. Johnson. Fire Marshal Gregorio Morales. Firefighter William E. Woodlawn. Lieutenant Ronald D. Biller. Captain Vincent R. Ungaro. Firefighter Paul F. Santoro. Firefighter Robert M. Gless. Firefighter John A. Dunn. Firefighter Harry L. Davis. Lieutenant Raymond W. Alexander. Firefighter Joseph P. O'Toole. Firefighter Kevin A. Rooney. Firefighter Brian J. Masterson. Firefighter Robert F. D. Giovanni. Lieutenant Edith E. Torres. Firefighter Robert E. Newman. EMT Rose M. Scott. Lieutenant Stephen Sorger. Lieutenant Mario Bastidas. Firefighter Roy E. Smith. Firefighter James J. Lanza. Paramedic Mark A. Harris. Firefighter Raymond J. Pfeiffer. Lieutenant William J. Kelly. Firefighter William J. Gormley. Firefighter John B. O'Brien. Firefighter Michael L. Duffy. Marine Engineer Robert W. Alexander. Battalion Chief Joseph D. McCune. Firefighter Michael R. O'Hanlon. Dr. Michael G. Gutenberg. Firefighter Robert M. Talarcio. Lieutenant Edward J. McDonough. Lieutenant Joseph R. Stack, Jr. Firefighter Raymond R. Phillips, Jr. Firefighter Ronald P. Sveck. Lieutenant Edward T. Meehan. Captain Victor C. Valva. Deputy Chief Joetti Frizzell. Firefighter Paul R. Tokarski. Pilot Thomas P. Phelan. Firefighter Keith R. Young. Marine Engineer John L. Bueller. Firefighter George F. Froelich. Firefighter Brent G. Kroback. Firefighter James J. Herson. Firefighter Robert J. Lembo. Assistant Chief Ronald R. Spatafora. Firefighter Charles Williams. Battalion Chief Robert P. Muccio. Firefighter Michael T. McDonald. Firefighter Jimmy Martinez. Firefighter Dennis G. Heaney. Firefighter John R. Elgis. EMT Felipe A. Torre. Paramedic Martha Stewart. EMT Joseph A. Rodriguez. Firefighter Daniel C. Bove. Captain John S. Moschella. Firefighter Richard H. Meehan. Lieutenant Timothy P. O'Neill. Firefighter Kevin E. Lennon. Captain Robert E. Collis. Lieutenant John T. Moran. Firefighter Joseph Walsh. Firefighter Lloyd W. Stewart. Firefighter Kevin J. Nolan. Firefighter Richard N. Driscoll. Auto Mechanic James J. Satilli. Firefighter Robert B. Fitzgibbon. Firefighter Walter E. McKee. Firefighter John W. Boyle. Firefighter Joseph R. Lucino. Firefighter Roger Espinal. Firefighter Richard J. Tanagretta. Firefighter Andrew S. Gargiulo. Lieutenant Richard G. Estriker. Firefighter Clifford R. Demuro. Captain Dennis M. Gilhuli. Firefighter Brian W. Cass. Firefighter Michael L. Feldman. Firefighter Richard B. Jones. Lieutenant Paul W. Deo Jr. Firefighter Joseph A. Hatzelman. Firefighter Daniel R. Foley. Battalion Chief Dennis J. Moynihan. Lieutenant Donald Franz. Firefighter Anthony R. Arachi. Firefighter John H. Marr. Firefighter Paul J. Greco. Lieutenant Kevin C. Dunn. Firefighter Anthony J. Catapano. Firefighter Paul A. McManaman. Associate Electrical Inspector Michael Cavolius. Firefighter John P. Fogarty. Firefighter Timothy J. Burke. EMT Renee Sanchez. Lieutenant John P. Poulos. 
Firefighter William Hodgins. Fire Marshal Robert J. Kelly. Firefighter Thomas G. Manley. Firefighter Ronald P. Storrs. Lieutenant Gerard C. McGibbon. Lieutenant Paige A. Humphreys. Firefighter Dennis A. Farrell. Firefighter George H. Wilton Jr. Firefighter Joseph M. Boyle. Captain Frank A. Portell. Firefighter Joseph K. Daly. Firefighter James D. Shaughnessy. Lieutenant James J. Winters. Captain John J. Galvin. Firefighter Sean D. Kenny. Firefighter Thomas G. Olkers. Firefighter Anthony Malfi. Firefighter Wayne T. Gehring. Paramedic Stevenson McCoy. Lieutenant Patrick J. Whalen. Firefighter Stephen J. Riley. Firefighter Dennis B. McLean. James Gormley, the captain of FDNY Engine 40, confirmed in the New York Daily News two weeks after September 11th that 11 members of his engine company were missing. I consider these members still listed as missing, he said, still operating at the scene as we have not been able to relieve them from duty. I have always had full faith and confidence in them, in their ability to lead, especially now. His firefighters were not lost, according to Gormley, but with faith, they continue to lead us to prayer. Let us pray. Dear God, 20 years later, we continue to pray. We pray together, mindful that we are not alone in our sorrow because you are here with us and we are here with one another. We pray for the fallen. They are the ones we love so dearly and miss so deeply. We have entrusted them to you and ask you to continue to embrace them in your love. We don't really have to tell you this, God, since you already know, but we'll say it again. The ones who have died and who we entrust to your care are some of the best people, wise, brave, compassionate, joyful, whip smart, and really funny. They are friends and family, neighbors and colleagues. They are your beloved children. We also pray for the crestfallen. This day marks a time of so much sadness and grief for so many. We ask for your care and comfort for the living. Remind us again and again that you are with us and you always have been. Every member of our department does their duty with the knowledge that any day could be the day they make the ultimate sacrifice. They know it the day they chose the vocation. They know it their first day on the job. And they know it every day thereafter. God, help us to always remember the loving sacrifice made by the 343 members of our department on 9-11 and the 257 members 
who have died due to World Trade Center related illnesses. The bravery of those members and the bravery of every other member of the FDNY. That bravery is what keeps millions of New Yorkers safe every day. And for this, we are forever grateful. Amen. Amen. Remain standing, please. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace.
Thank you.